So Donald Trump, according to these new polls, appears to be broadening his appeal a bit. He's had an enthusiastic core base, as you know, but the new polls, take a look at this one, show that some people who had no interest in him may now be more interested. 59% of Republican primary voters now say that they could see themselves potentially supporting Donald Trump. This as he battles with Jeb Bush this week over the subject of September 11th. Now Trump supporters are pointing to evidence that Trump may know what he's talking about, they say. Take a look back at this excerpt from a book that he wrote in 2000. He said this, I really am convinced we're in danger of the sort of terrorist attack that will make the bombing of the World Trade Center look like kids playing with firecrackers. No sensible analyst rejects this possibility, and plenty of them, like me, are not wondering if, but when, it will happen. Rich Lowry, editor of the National Review and a Fox News contributor, and Matthew Littman, former speechwriter for Vice President Joe Biden. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, very good to have Thanks, you here. Uh, Matthew, let me, let me put this first question to you. Um, Obviously, this is, you know, politically, this is drawing Jeb into some pretty uh, difficult territory. He is fighting back now in a way that, you know, we've seen a little bit of in the past, but he, he's trying to strengthen that push and be more aggressive. How do you, what do you make of it? Oh, I think for Jeb Bush, this is a disaster, if you ask me. Trump keeps getting Bush into these arguments that I don't think Bush should want to be fighting. To be fighting, it's October. I was just coming right up in just a few months to be fighting now about September 11th for Jeb Bush, who's supposed to be talking about his record in Florida, cannot be good for Jeb Bush. I think Trump is really destroying the Jeb Bush campaign. I really do. And for Jeb Bush, every time I see him in one of these interviews, Martha, he keeps putting his foot in his mouth and it's hard to run with one foot on the ground and one foot in your mouth. Yeah, oh, well, that's true. That's an interesting, an interesting image. Um, I, Rich, I want to just read one more of these quotes from, from this book. I mean, Trump certainly wasn't the only person uh, who was, you know, sort of, George Shannon famously had his hair on fire at the CIA about what he was concerned about was going to happen around this time. But in the book, Trump said, back in 2000, I may be making waves, but that's all right. Making waves is usually what you need to do to rock the boat, and our national security boat definitely needs rocking. Let's point fingers. The biggest threat to our security is ourselves because we've become arrogant, dangerously arrogant. It's time for a realistic view of the world and our place in it. And he went on to describe teenagers. He said American teenagers, you know, teenage boys like Cindy Crawford. Um, there are teenage boys who want to basically turn our cities to charcoal, to ashes, and that's their motivation. What do you well, think? It certainly allows Trump supporters and Trump himself to point to those passages and claim he was prescient about this all along. And I basically agree this is not a gr great fight for Jeb. You understand why he's doing it. He feels those brothers being attacked. There are warm feelings towards George W. Bush and the Republican Party. But Jeb has, this entire campaign has been so reactive and constantly is getting drawn into fights on Trump's territory. And even if, if Jeb prosecutes this case as adeptly as possible, he's still arguing about his brother, which is the last place he wants to be. Yeah, you know, but I'm sure, Matt, that he looks back at the Romney campaign, and one of the things that Romney was criticized for was not punching back. Um, and Donald Trump has said, look, when I'm hit, I will attack. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to go looking for it, but if somebody punches me, right. I will punch them back. So that seems to be what Jeb's trying to do. How would you, you know, what would you do if you were advising him um, to try to get, you know, on the upper side of this? Well, first of all, if I were advising Jeb Bush, I'd say quit drop out of this race. What? You know, he's got $100 million in the super PAC. And I'm more reminded, not of the Romney era, but of Phil Graham. When Phil Graham ran for president, he had a ton of money. He had all the money. People thought because of that, because he was winning the money race, he might become president. That seems to me what's happening with Jeb Bush here. He's got a ton of money. But, I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, Rich. I don't hear anybody speaking about Jeb Bush's campaign with any enthusiasm. I don't hear any voters enthusiastic about the Jeb Bush campaign. Yeah, it's hard to go out there and just bump into the average Bush supporter on the ground because there aren't many yeah. of them. And this, these next several weeks are key for Jeb. One, he needs to put in a really strong performance in the next debate and show some secular progress 
in his debate performances. And two, there needs to be some real indication because he is now spending or a super PAC is spending money on advertising in these early states. Is it making a difference? Is it really moving the needle? And if he doesn't have a good debate, if there's no signs of movement, then you're going to see the establishment and especially big establishment donors begin to look at Marco yeah. Rubio and say, well, maybe this is our guy. Yeah, uh, we're going to actually show the Rubio numbers um, a little bit later on because he is coming on stronger. And also some comments by Mike Murphy, who is one of the people who's enthusiastically speaking out in favor uh, of Jeb Bush. And he works, uh, he's handling that super PAC that you just talked about. So more on that coming up. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Matt Thanks,